Hello. Uh, I'm not sure if it looks like we have three people watching right now. So uh, hello, my name is Ryan and this is What Game Next. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is we have the Marvel Champions LCG. I'm going to be taking a look at a couple of the heroes. We're going to be looking at deck building in the game, how it works, uh, trying out a different, <clears throat> a couple of the different deck building ideas just kind of seeing, you know, what you can do with the game as far as deck building goes. Uh, if people have questions about deck building, feel free to ask them in the chat. <clears throat> I've got chat up here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're just going to check it out. It's a really cool game. I've played it a bunch of times so far, and uh, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm really looking forward to some of the new packs coming out. So, yeah, so let's get started. So does anybody have a hero that they want me to start with? I guess we should just start there. Because if not, then what I'm going to do is I am just going to start with going over the general uh, ideas, like how the deck building works, and we'll start with Spider-Man because he's probably the most straightforward and then we'll just kind of go with there So <clears throat> If anybody's familiar with some of uh, FFG's other LCGs like Arkham Horror uh, The way this the deck building works in Arkham Horror is you start with a Investigator and here you start with a hero in Arkham Horror the investigator comes with usually one a special item or spell or something like that and then they come with a uh, curse or weakness or something like that and those both go in your deck and then they have deck building restrictions um, that limit what you can put into your deck. Uh, Marvel Champions, uh, the, the weakness and in this it's the nemesis, um, they go off to the side and the Main weakness goes into the encounter deck instead of into your deck. So in in uh, Arkham Horror, there was some metagaming around, like you can minimize your own weakness by the way you built your deck and how it goes through and stuff. But in this, because it's in the encounter deck, like you may not even be the one to draw your weakness. Somebody else could draw it and then give it to you, and then you have to face it at that time, and they get a pass. So that's kind of an interesting change from uh, how it works in Arkham. <clears throat> In addition, in Marvel Champions, uh, instead of just having like one or two cards that you have to include in your deck, there's actually a slew of cards that you have to include in your deck. Um, for, for instance, with Spider-Man, there's two backflips, there's an Aunt May, two Spider-Sense, two Spider-Trackers, Two web shooters, black cat, three spinning web kicks or swinging web kicks. Except, sorry, uh, two webbed ups, and then your weakness is the eviction notice. So all of these have to go in your deck to start. Your deck is a minimum of forty cards, and can go up to fifty cards. So. There is some leeway in there in how you build. Traditionally, in most games where you build your deck, it's bad to go over the minimum deck size because it limits the uh, one the the consistency of your deck. the The more cards you put in the deck, the less chance you you will see the cards that you want to see. So, typically, you want to you want to stick to the minimum as much as possible. Um, I, it's really hard to see a time where, where that would be different. The exception to that in this game is that when you filter all the way through your deck, <clears throat> you're forced to take a, an encounter card um, in addition to the one you normally take at the end of the round. So maybe if there's a hero whose most of their cards draw them more cards um, and they're playing an aspect that draws a lot of cards, um, it might be advantageous to go all the way up to 50 just because you're churning through your deck so quickly 
um, that you're trying to limit the number of encounter cards that you're having to deal with through the course of the game. I could see that possibly being uh, a strategy that you might want to, to try. Um, outside of some kind of a corner case like that, I, I don't think that that's probably... Yeah, I, I agree, Brega. Uh, Marvel Champions is, is awesome. Um, the even just the initial deck building, um, they could they could introduce other variations of the same type of heroes. Like we could in the future get another Spider Man pack that has different base cards for Spider Man, and then you could have like you know a different Spider Man, an older Spider Man, or you know one of his variations. Um, I I can't imagine that they won't at some point have Miles Morales or some some other. Spider-Man that's not, you know, Peter Parker Spider-Man. Um, but yeah, all they have to do is, you know, introduce, you know, some new base cards and and you're off to off and running right there. So, uh, <clears throat> so deck building considerations in the game. Every hero is is supposedly playable with every aspect in the game. So, you can just take the aspect cards from any of the four aspects, combine them with your base cards, and then you add neutrals. In the core set, <clears throat> you're going to be playing with a lot of neutral cards just because each of the aspects only has 19 cards. Loyalty has, or sorry, leadership has 18 cards. Um, that's because they have an additional, um, they have an additional ally, and allies, named allies, are unique, so you can only have one of them in your deck. So they don't have multiple copies of it. So it ends up they have one less card in leadership. Um, so just if you put every copy of one of the aspects in there with the 19, and then the cards for your, for your character themselves, there's 15. You have 29 cards. Just to get to a base minimum deck, you have to add 11 neutrals. Um, that could potentially change... Once we get more hero packs and we get more cards for specific aspects, it could get to the point where you can include, you know, all of the cards from a, a single aspect and get up to your minimum deck size. But at this point, there's just not enough cards to do that. So, and in fact, you probably don't want to even include all of the cards for a single aspect just because um, even though most of them, you know, try to achieve the goal, that they're going for, um, you know, leadership, playing with allies, aggression, doing damage, and stuff like that, um, they may not be going for what you're trying to do with the hero. So you may not want to include all of them, and even the starter decks don't include every copy of every card for, from the aspect. <clears throat> so that's something to look at. Uh, one thing that would be interesting, though, is to see if, if there would ever be a time where you get to a point where you have a hero that just has their hero cards and all neutral cards. Like, that would be a very interesting thing to see as well. Um, I don't think there's enough different neutral cards in the core set to do that either yet. Um, but with Captain America and Miss Marvel introducing new cards, uh, they introduce neutrals as well as uh, a new card for each aspect. So, um... Once we get those, and maybe like another deluxe box, uh, who knows what we could do with deck building. So, um, I think that they're going to ramp up pretty hard on releases over the first six months to a year. Um, it makes sense for them to do that. They, they don't want people to get bored too quickly. Uh, that's an easy way to kill an LCG. Um, having too many packs is another way to kill an LCG, so I, I assume they... They don't want to do that either. So um, we'll start off with just looking at what the different cards in um, Spider-Man's kit do, uh, what he's trying to achieve with those, and then <clears throat> and then uh, take a look at a couple of the different aspects and see what those either add to his kit and uh, see how you would deck build with those. So to start off, we have Spider-Man himself. So the Spider-Man side, he has a passive ability that whenever he is attacked, you get to draw a card. 
that's really, really good, um, especially co considering a couple of his cards do things to mitigate damage, um, stop encounter cards from affecting, and the, um, net, the villain attacks before the encounter cards are flipped. So being able to draw into the cards that negate the encounters is really, really strong. And so his, his passive ability is really, really good. Um, and it also triggers when he has minions in front of him um, that are attacking him. So he can potentially draw a lot of cards. Um, and even, even if he doesn't use them to mitigate damage, he has three defense, which he can use to mitigate damage. Um, and then use those cards as extra energy to play more cards during his turn, which is also really strong. Um, <clears throat> and then on his Peter Parker side, he gets an extra energy every turn, which is also effectively a free card. It's a free card that you drew and then just played as an energy to play another card out. So his economy is really, really good. Um... I don't really I, like. I don't really know a downside as far as Spider Man. I guess his downside is his thwart is one, so he's not he's not super good at thwarting, um, right off the bat. Uh, even if you if you put him in Justice, he gets uh, access to a bunch of cards that help his thwarting. Uh, but I guess that's his weakness. But drawing so many cards, it's hard to it's hard to even call that a weakness. <clears throat> So starting at his, his zero cost cards, he starts off with backflip. Backflip is a zero cost interrupt. So there's been many times where I've drawn this card um, while being attacked and then been immediately able to play it to mitigate all the damage from that attack. So you play it, the boss boosts or villain boosts and then you get to see how much damage it is before you decide whether you want to backflip or not. If it's a large amount of damage, then you can backflip, and if it's a small amount of damage, then you can just take it. Um, so really, really good. Uh, his web spinners are a upgrade. You pay one to put them into play. You can play them from his Peter Parker side. So you play them for free. Uh, one of them at least for free on a turn because he generates the one free resource. So then you can use that to play the web shooter and then flip to his um, Spider-Man side. And then because it's a hero resource, you can only use the resource on his Spider-Man side, but then you can immediately exhaust it um, to use that um, on his Spider-Man side to effectively like push that resource that he gets for free on Peter Parker's side over to his uh, Spider-Man side. Um, and you can have both of them out at a time because they're not one per one per player. So you can effectively have two free resources um, out if you get both web shooters. Then we have Aunt May. Aunt May can only be activated when you're on your Peter Parker side, but you exhaust her to just heal four. So potentially with her plus Peter Parker himself, if you were really, really hurt, you could heal seven on a turn. I've never had to do that because usually her heal for four is enough to get him back to where he needs to be. Um, but you don't have any other reason to exhaust on your Peter Parker side. So if you had any other damage, you would probably just do that unless you like attack on Spider-Man side flip to Peter Parker, and then exhaust with Aunt May to get that extra four healing. Um, and then on your next turn, exhaust with Aunt May to heal for four, and then flip back on your Spider-Man side. So then we have Enhanced Spider-Sense. It is a hero interrupt. It says when a tre treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck, cancel its when revealed effects. So um, you can use this on your own treachery cards that are revealed. You can use it on one of your allies' treachery cards that are revealed um, to cancel their effects. It doesn't specify, so you can use it for anybody's. And this can basically 
stop you guys stop your your team from losing the game. There's been a lot of times when a treachery card flips that's be, that's like shadows from the past that brings somebody the nemesis set into play. Canceling that out for one energy is an enormous game swing. Um, and he gets two of them in his kit for free. So then we have Spider tra Tracers. This one I end up using a lot for energy. Um, this is one of the cards that kind of um, negates his weakness of only being able to thwart for one. Um, but you attach it to a minion, and then when that minion is defeated, you remove three threat from a scheme. Uh, it doesn't come up super often in the, in the, the plays that I've been in. It, when you're playing single player, it could be very big because the, the threat level on the main villain scheme is very low because you only get seven like on Rhino's level one. And seven threat comes really, really quick when you're playing solo. Uh, so the Spider Tracer can reduce a huge proportion of the threat in the game. So yeah, I and it does negate his his weakness. Now you don't have any choice on whether you include all these cards or not, so you're going to have it. Uh, but I do tend to to discard it a lot as energy. <clears throat> and then we have his one his his uh, one other ally. Um, I think all of the heroes in the base set have two allies. So this is his second one, which is Black Cat. So Black Cat. <clears throat> Um, after you play her, you discard the top two cards of your deck, and each card with a printed, um, I believe it's science, is the, is the, is the name for the resource. Um, it's the same resource he generates, but each card that has a printed one of those that's discarded, you return those cards to your hand. Uh, so she is another card draw engine for him. In addition to that, some people miss this on her card but her card does not have incidental damage on her attack. So she can attack without damaging herself, which a lot of um, allies in the game cannot do. So when you're playing Peter Parker with leadership, um, there's, I believe the card is called Inspire, which lets you ready um, an ally for one energy. Um, you can use that with her to sit and attack with her over and over again. And... Uh, she doesn't damage herself, so she won't go away by doing that. Um, a lot of people miss the fact that she doesn't have an incidental damage on her on her attack. Um, because almost every single other ally in the game does. So next, he has three copies of Swinging Web Kick. This is his big damage dealer finisher. Um, you, when you're playing solo with uh, Spider-Man, this is normally how like you finish Rhino off. Uh, three, three energy, eight damage, very straightforward. Um, just a lot of damage for a lot of energy. And then finally he has uh, webbed up. Two copies of that. Uh, hero form only. You attach it to an enemy. Uh, only one on each enemy, and then when the attached enemy would attack, you discard it, and then they get a stun. So they added a um, fact entry for this on the RRG um, that they released the day the game came out. This card actually negates two attacks in a row. It negates the first attack when the webbed up is on them. So they attack, the webbed up is on them, they, the webbed up goes away. They get the stun. Then the, on their next attack, the stun replaces their second attack. So webbed up is four energy to replace two attacks in a row on the villain potentially, which is actually an enormous amount of uh, uh, negation on damage, uh, especially when uh, you're talking about Rhino with his upgrades like charge. Uh, and some of his, like if he gets his horn and stuff like that, he's he's looking at, at sometimes doing with boosts, you know, six, seven, eight, nine damage to one person. Uh, 
with overkill. So even if you block with a an ally, he's trampling over them and hitting the hero. So yeah, webbed up can give you a lot of time to help get rid of some of that stuff. All right, so <clears throat> that is his base kit. So the next thing that we are going to look at is um, we're going to look at one of the four aspects and see how it relates to his kit and what we would do um, if we were going to build a deck with him and that kit. So does anybody have, one, which aspect should we look at? Does anybody have a suggestion? Anybody? We have justice, we have aggression, we have leadership, and we have protection. Looking at chat, and we're getting no responses there. So the top one. Well, yeah, leadership. Uh, leadership is, but it, it, that's because it. I think mainly because of Black Cat, because she's so good with being able to attack multiple times. So let's try one that that people that people aren't um, all over for building. Uh, Let's look at let's look at protection. He has a huge defense. He has three defense on his on his uh, hero side for negating. So so we'll look at the the protection cards and then we'll see how how these can uh, with webbed up he can restrict the villain from attacking. Um, he can do some damage, he can do a little bit of thwarting, he can negate treacheries, and he has, with the, the web shooters, he's not, um, restricted to, like, playing big stuff, he can store some energy and play it, so, um, each of the four aspects has a resource card, that resource card is max two per deck, um, they are the power of the name of the aspect. So in this case, it's power of protection. Um, it's a wild resource. Um, however, it's double the amount of resources when it's paid for, you, or it's used to pay for a card of its aspect. So it's worth two resources if it's paying for a protection card. All four of the, the aspects have one of these cards and um, I don't see any reason why you would ne ever not include that card in when you're playing that aspect. Um, it also, let's see, it has a card called Counter Punch, which is a zero cost response. After your hero defends against an enemy attack, deal damage to that enemy equal to your hero's attack. So Spider-Man's attack is a two. So this gives you an, another way of doing damage. Um, there's three copies of Armored Vest. Play under any player's control, max one per player. Your hero gains plus one defense. That one's pretty straightforward. Um, there's three copies of Get Behind Me. Uh, it is a hero interrupt. When a treasury card is revealed from the encounter deck, cancels when revealed effects, the villain attacks you instead. So this one cancels the uh, treachery card like Spider-Man's own card but then causes the villain to attack you which would then cause Spider-Man to draw a card which is actually pretty good so it replaces itself uh, minus the the one energy that you use to play it. Uh, Indomitable which is one cost uh, Upgrade, so it sits in play until you need to use it, and then when your hero defends, discard Indomitable, ready your hero. 
Um, each aspect also comes with two allies. So the first one for protection is Black Cat, or sorry, not Black Cat, Black Widow. Mm. Uh, she has an interrupt when the card is revealed from the encounter deck, exhaust Black Widow and spend an energy resource, or what is the name? We're, I'm going to look up the, the name of the resource that Peter Parker generates here. Mental. It's called a mental resource. All right. So it's, when a card is revealed from the encounter deck, exhaust Black Widow and spend a mental resource, cancel the effects of that card and discard it, then reveal another card from the encounter deck. So it is another way of can canceling um, encounter cards, but this one doesn't just counter the win reveals on treacheries, this can encounter, uh, this can counter uh, minions as well and force it to be replaced with another card. Um, how does that work with his once per round? The villain phase is at the beginning of the round. So you could use uh, Peter, if you're on your Peter Parker side, you could use the energy, the mental resource from here to pay for Black Widow's effect. But if you did, that would be your use of it for the whole upcoming round. It could, that could still be really good though, and you wouldn't lose a card from your hand to do it. Um, he also comes with three med teams. Or he does. Uh, protection does. They come with three counters on them. You exhaust it and remove a counter to heal two damage from a friendly character, so this can heal other heroes as well as their allies and yours. Uh, and then fi finally Luke Cage, who comes into play with a tough card and five health, and then when he, he does two damage on the attack and one thwarting. So... Incidentally, I believe the incidental damage will knock the toughness off, so you probably don't want to use him until you're defending, like for the first time, to take a big chunk of damage. And then after that, you can use him freely after his toughness is knocked off, but you want to save that first hit for some big villain strike. Okay, so the only ones that I see in here that questionably you might not want to include all three copies of. Are potentially the med teams. And the armored vests. The armored vests are one per player. Um, if you're playing on playing solo, you definitely don't want to include three. Uh, you would not want to include more than two. And if you, same goes, same goes probably for med team. Um, and even when you're playing with multiplayer, you could put the, the armored vest on one of your allies, but if they're not defending much, then it's fairly wasted. So I would be... Yes, you can you can stack the med teams. They're not one per person or one per player or anything like that. So you can have just multiple med teams out just doing surgery on, on everyone in play all the time. I guess it depends on how much damage each person is taking. Um, I can imagine it depends on the villain you're fighting as well. Uh, Ultron, who's constantly putting minions into play in front of everybody and everybody's taking damage every turn. Uh, the med teams are probably a lot more useful than um, maybe on Rhino, where you're probably going to be able to defend most of the attacks, and he's going to chunk people, but only one or two at a time for any significant amount of damage. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you, like... 
Two is probably solid. I Three, I don't know. And same with the vest. The rest of the cards, though, I, I can't imagine not have wanting three Indomitables, three Get Behind Me's, three Counter Punch because it's just damage, and you always want the, the double energy cards that are in there. Um, deck building is going to be a lot more interesting once... Uh, once some of the hero packs come out and we have a lot more cards to work with. Hmm. That's really interesting. Now, one other thing to look at, especially with Black Cat, is, or Black Cat, I keep saying, Black Widow, is how many of these cards actually have the mental resource on them, like the Armored Vest does and Get Behind Me does. So both of those cards could potentially get put back into your hand when you play um, Black Widow. Or I was right in the first place. It was Black Cat. Yes. Black Cat's the one that puts them into your hand. So, and in his initial kit, Enhanced Spider Sense and the three Swinging Web Kicks have the mental resource. So those ones as well could get put back into your hand. So that's one thing to take into consideration is how much you're going to dilute your deck with cards that potentially um, are going to be dead draws on some of your effects like um, Black Cat. Some of it you're not going to be able to help just because the choices are so slim. You're not going to be able to do much about it. So let's say, for the for the sake of argument, we didn't include one of each Armored Vest and, and Med Team. So that leaves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, the neutral cards. And the neutral cards are interesting because there's a lot of staples, I think, in the neutral cards. Um, I think that pretty much every deck is going to always want, at least for a long time, is going to want to run one of each of the doubles, the double energies. Um, there's strength, genius, and energy that give you doubles for each of those. And then Then we have Emergency, which is an Interrupt Thwart. When the villain schemes, reduce the amount of threat placed on the scheme by one. That doesn't go with what Protection or with uh, Spider-Man's kid's trying to do here. Um, he's not really concerned with reducing the, uh, the threat on the schemes. First Aid, one cost, action, heal two damage from any character. This potentially would be good in here, um, but with the med teams, I don't think that it's necessary. Haymaker, hero action, deal three uh, damage to an enemy for two. Uh, that seems generically solid, especially in an aggression deck. I could see that being really good. Tenacity. Hero action, spend a, a fist resource, probably strength, spend a strength resource, and discard this card to ready your hero. Now that seems like definitely a contender given that you're going to be defending. Um, it's like Indomitable, except worse, because <laughs> it's a generic. Uh, Indomitable lets you ready for free. Tenacity you have to pay for uh, when you do it. And it costs more to put into play but it's a possibility. Helicarrier, three cost support, max one per player. You exhaust it, it reduces the next card you play by one. 
Um, that one is also generically good. I think a lot of decks will just play it just because. Uh, Mockingbird, three cost ally. Uh, when it enters play, it stuns an enemy. I could see this being a contender for being played in the deck just because it does more of what protection is trying to do. It's stopping the villain from doing villain things. It's not going to attack. Uh, yeah, so I can see that being a possibility. <clears throat> Avengers Mansion, max one per player. Action, exhaust Avengers Mansion, choose a player, that player draws a card. A uh, couple reasons. One, this is just good. It just draws you a card every turn, or a player a card every turn. It also has a mental resource on it, which means that Black Cat will draw it if you flip it. Um, you don't want to put two of them or three of them in the... You might want to put two of them in the deck. You don't want to put three of them in the deck uh, because it's max one per player. And then Nick Fury, who is a four cost. He also is a mental resource, so same reasoning as Avengers Mansion. Uh, when he comes into play... You get to either remove two threat from the scheme, draw three cards, or deal four damage to an enemy. And then at the end of the round, if he's in play, you discard him. So he deals four damage to an enemy, but because he can also attack, he really does six damage. Um, same with Thwart. He thwarts for two, but he can also remove two threat, so he can thwart for four. Um, or any combination of those, so he could attack for two and thwart for two, or you know, vice versa, or draw you three cards, which most of the time is really meaning that he comes into play for one uh, and then attacks or thwarts. So, <clears throat> so if we figure that you're playing one of each of the energies, that's 35. So you have five cards left to play to get to a minimum 40. And so this is where the hard the hard choices come in. So I could see like two Nick Fury, two Avengers Mansion, and then a Tenacity or a Mockingbird. One of those two. You probably don't... Tenacity is just not as good as Indomitable. You probably just want to stick with the Indomitables. It's just better. And Mockingbird gets to stun for free when you put her into play. Yeah, I think that's that's probably probably true. So something like this would end up being like the first pass at a deck, and that's the thing with uh, with deck building in any game, and especially in an LCG, is that you build you build your first pass of the deck, you shuffle it up, you give it a try, and then you see where you're lacking, um, especially if you have a set play group that you're playing with and they, they have their decks and they have their set. And you're like, oh, this was really good, except, you know, we, like I had always had answers to damage. That was never a problem. But, you know, the main scheme ran away and, you know, that was an issue. So in that case, then then maybe you would want to, you know, take out a few of the cards in the in the uh, Indomitable set, like either Indomitable or, you know, the Armored Vests. Armored Vests are probably the first cut, 
and then add in something that helps you more with thwarting. Which out of the generics, really the only thing that would help you with thwarting is tenacity because it doesn't require you to actually do anything to ready yourself. Like you could thwart and then ready and then thwart again. The emergency only removes one threat. I mean, you could, they're free, you could play them instead. And that would help a little bit, but the the protection kit and the generic kit are really not very good at reducing thwarting. So that's going to be an issue no matter what you do. Yeah, so adding, adding tenacities would help a little tiny bit. And adding the, the emergencies would be about the only thing you could do if that was a, a real weakness. And you just never had a problem with, with damage. If you were just never in danger of dying, then you could remove like the armored vests. And maybe one of the med teams. But that would be like playtesting. So you're playtesting, seeing how the decks work. And seeing what is what problems that you're having and those problems are going to be different based on what each villain has available to them and also the modules so in the game the recommended setups for each of the villains is in the back of the book but each one has a modular set that they recommend that you start with when you play that villain for the first time but you can remove that modular set and include one of the other modular sets. And one of the, the sets is not included in any of the three villain fights. And it is the hardest module set that you can add. I believe it's the Doomsday Chair. Uh, and in addition to that, another thing that you can do is add a multiple modular sets to the villain deck, which does two things. One, it thins the encounter deck. So a few of the... <clears throat> cards like Shadows of the Past that brings your nemesis set in are less likely to show up. However, you're more likely to get, you know, one of the encounter sets from the modules, which some of them are harder than, than some of the other cards that show up in the base encounter sets. So it's a balancing thing, and it does change the way that the, the game plays quite a bit. So those are, are some considerations when you're building your deck um, is which villain you're playing. So in Arkham, a lot of times people will change the deck that they're, they're bringing when they go to an event to the store or they'll change the deck um, based on which arc that they're going to be uh, playing because they know, you know, this set of missions is heavy on fighting or this set of missions is heavy on clue gathering same is going to be true in in marvel champions there are going to be villains who are big on fighting with like ultron who creates a bunch of minions for you to deal with and there are going to be um ones like claw who boost a bunch and it's all about you know, single big numbers as opposed to a bunch of little guys. And the way you build your deck is going to, to be affected by that. So does anybody have any questions about the game in general or in deck about deck building in particular?
So one of the things that I'm going to be doing um, on the channel coming up soon is a I'm going to be doing a couple playthroughs. One of them is on Friday, November 15th. Um, I'm going to be doing a playthrough of one of the scenarios, <clears throat> and we're going to be focusing on doing a playthrough with multiple characters of the same aspect. So we might be doing um, multiple aggression heroes or multiple justice heroes. Um, is what the ones I'm leaning towards at first because I think those ones are more likely to be uh, interesting in combination with each other. Probably Justice because <clears throat> they do a little bit of everything. So I think together they'll be they'll be interesting. Uh, but that's one of the the things that I'm going to be doing on the stream is I'm going to be exploring some of the the corner cases is with doing teams that aren't exactly what they intended. So out of the box, they intend for you to have, you know, up to four players, each one with a different aspect. So I'm going to be doing same aspects. I'm going to be doing, um, I'm probably going to try at least one where we do the same hero even. Um, although I'm not sure how I'm going to do that one. Maybe same hero, different, um, different aspects that one will be that one will be interesting uh, another one that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna be playing around with the the villains themselves um, I'm gonna mix up some of the game setup and try doing um, like level one all the way to level three and doing some stuff like that uh, with solo play and see see if it's even feasible to go all the way through like that or if it's just too hard to, once you get through to certain encounter sets. I imagine with the base setup, it's probably possible to do those without too much trouble, but with the, the harder setups, it might not be. So we'll see how that goes. Because I imagine once you get from the first to the second phase, you're gonna you're gonna get through the encounter deck enough times that your acceleration tokens are gonna get to the point where the villain is just going to scheme once and complete a scheme and end the game. Like that's what's gonna happen, at least in solo. In multiplayer, that's not as big a deal. But when you only have seven uh, threat to complete the main scheme when you have you know three acceleration tokens that's four to start and then if they scheme once and they get any boost at all then that's going to end the game Okay, so that was a look at general deck building with Spider-Man and protection. Um, I think I'm going to wrap that up for right now. I hear my wife in the other room. So I may do another stream tomorrow um, where I explore one of the other heroes. And... One of the other aspects until I get through and I'll do that a couple more times this week probably until I get through all four of each and that way then I'll gateway that into into some of the solo gameplay content and stuff like that so thanks guys for watching and I will see you next time